Solvency Ratios Problem 2. Tangerine Inc. provides the following data. It's a comparative balance sheet on December 31st, 20x9. Assets, specifically current assets, cash and cash equivalents $29,000, accounts receivable net $31,000, merchandise inventory $53,000 for total current assets of $113,000, property plan and equipment net $120,000 for total assets of $233,000. Liabilities, specifically current liabilities, accounts payable $4,500, notes payable $3,000 for total current liabilities of $7,500. Long-term liabilities $89,000 for total liabilities of $96,500. Stockholders' equity, common stock $33,000, retained earnings $103,500 for total stockholders' equity of $136,500. Total liabilities and stockholders' equity, $233,000. Calculate the debt-to-equity ratio. There are a lot of stuff in this in this problem. There's a lot of things going on. I've got a full balance sheet. It's a big balance sheet. Woo! Right? A lot of information. The good news, that's a bad news. You've got a lot of stuff to go through. The good news is that you're just calculating the debt-to-equity ratio, which is exactly what it sounds. All you're doing is you're taking total liabilities over total equity. That's all the formula is. Before I write that down, this is a solvency analysis question. This is a solvency analysis question. Solvency analysis, we're focusing on the company's ability to pay off its long-term liabilities or long-term debts. And there's a few different calculations that go into the solvency analysis. We've got the ratio of fixed assets to long-term liabilities, the ratio of liabilities is to stockholders' equity, which you see here, and the number of times interest charges earned. So this one, again, is the debt-to-equity ratio. All we're doing is taking the total liabilities over the total equity or total stockholders' equity if it's a corporation like we have here or the total um, owner's equity if it's a share um, of sole proprietorship or a partnership. Here it's just total liabilities over total equity. We're given total liabilities of $96,500. So let's go ahead and put down $96,500. Simple as that. We're going to divide that by the total stockholders equity of 136,500. Of 136,500. So we do that calculation. We're going to get 0.71. 0.71, that is our ratio, it's 0.71. We want this number to be as low as possible, especially if you're a lender looking at the business. The idea is that if this number is high, if it's over one, that means that the liabilities exceed the the equity. So the debt to equity ratio or the, or the debt portion, that is higher. So if you're a lender looking at um, lending money to a business, there's already a lot, the, the business is already over leveraged. It's more debt than it is equity, which means that if something happens to the company, there's no risk because the debt that has to be paid by law. But when it's equity, there's risk taken where, okay, well, uh, someone owning common stock or preferred stock, they're a equity owner. If the business does bad, oh well. If it does good, they're going to benefit in the rewards. So the idea is that if you are looking at, um, are lending money to this business, and you see a, a debt to equity ratio of greater than one, very likely you want to invest. Even getting close to one is very, very difficult because again, the idea is that your junior, your debt might be considered junior to others that are already there, see, that, which is more senior. So if something does happen to the business, you're likely or less likely to get your money compared to them, which they're going to get their money first before yours. I like to think of it as the first bite at the apple. So if this business goes under, well, tangerine, first bite at tangerine, right? We've got the tangerine ink. So the first bite at the tangerine, if this business goes under and the and the lenders, the creditors, they come after the business for the assets, get the money from the assets, and there's more senior or more um, superior you know, more prioritized debt than yours and you're a lender, they're going to get the money before you and then there might not be anything left. There might not be anything in the tangerine to bite or it might just be a little bit but not enough to cover what you invested. So that's the idea of what this ratio is. You want to keep this as low as possible so that you can um, have lenders. Now, you don't want it too low. You don't want to have all your business in terms of equity. And the reason why is because then if you are an owner and some of you might have watched like a show on TV, like Shark Tank or something like that, where there's people out there investing in, you know, trying to raise money and they're trying to raise, to try and get capital and they don't want to give up too much of their business because 
that's their business. You don't want to give up too much of your business to other people. Then you're basically losing the ability to, to benefit in the rewards when the business does well. So keep that in mind as well. So there's, it really depends on the business, the industry you're in. Um, but definitely if you're a lender, you don't want to see a debt to equity ratio of greater than one, because that means that there's more debt than equity in the businesses over leverage. But where that sweet spot is depends on their specific business. So keep all that in mind when you're going through this specific ratio.